In this section, we will discuss the equilibrium of an autonomous ODE. So let's start with the definition of an autonomous ordinary differential equation. You probably remember that we have described our ODEs with this uh, formula here, y prime equals f of t y of t, with a very general form to describe our ODE. And as you know, if we add the initial condition y of t naught equal y naught, then we have an initial value problem. Now, when we consider our ODE with this uh, function f to describe it, then we will say the ODE is autonomous if f does not depend on the first variable, does not depend on t, if you prefer. So that really means that y prime of t will be f of y of t. It does not depend on the time variable. Let me give you two examples. If you look at y prime of t equals 3y, which means that the function f is f of tx equals 3x, then, uh, well, it will be autonomous, because obviously f of tx equals 3x does not depend on t. And later on, we'll just say, okay, that's f of x and the 3x. However, if you consider y prime of t equals 3y of t plus t, then that plus t will make you have f of tx equals 3x plus t, and then the ODE will not be autonomous. Now that we have defined an autonomous ODE, that we will therefore write y prime of t equals f of y of t, let me define the equilibrium x star of that ODE. That will be a x star such that f of x star equals zero. And you see the consequence of this is that when you have y naught equals x star, then the solution will be stationary. A uh, natural example here is y prime equals 3y, therefore the function f of tx, or rather f of x at this point, will be 3x. And obviously, uh, 3x equals 0 is equivalent to x equals 0, which means that x star is equal to 0. This x star equals 0 will be the equilibrium to the ODE y prime of t equals 3y of t. Which means, again, that if you consider the initial value problem where you have y of uh, 0 equals uh, y0, where basically y0 is x star, then you will have a stationary solution. Now, let's define uh, what it means to be Lyapunov stable for an equilibrium. So I start with an autonomous OD, then I have an equilibrium x star. x star will be Lyapunov stable if for any neighborhood w of this x star, this equilibrium, then there exists a neighborhood V of x star such that when the when y naught is in V, in other words, when you start uh, your, your initial value problem, when the initial value, uh, when the when the y naught is in V, then for any positive t, y of t, which means the solution to the ODE, will stay in this neighborhood W of our equilibrium. In other words, it means that if you start close enough to the equilibrium, then your ODE, the solution to the ODE, will stay close enough to this equilibrium. Of course, what I just said is not a mathematical definition. The mathematical definition is the one which is up there. But, but you know, I mean, if you want to understand what it means is you start with a Y naught which is close to the equilibrium and then your solution stays close to the solution. And if it's not the case, then that uh, x star will be called unstable. And if you remember what we did in the previous section, we had a situation where we, 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 we saw for uh, y prime equals my with a positive m, that it was unstable. And remember that, that that's exactly what happened. You started uh, close to the equilibrium, which was zero, and then you were not staying close to zero. It was unstable. And again, if it is uh, otherwise, it's called, uh, it is called Yapunov stable. Now, you can be even better than uh, Yapunov stable. You can actually uh, require a little bit more 
which is what? Which is that if the equilibrium has the following property, which is that you start in the, I mean, um, basically there is, there is a, a neighborhood of that, of that X star, of that equilibrium, such that if your initial condition is in that neighborhood, Y naught is in V, then the limit of the solution to the ODE will be X star. So it's more than staying close at this point. Not only do you stay close to X star, but you're actually going to converge to X star as T goes to plus infinity. So it's really, it's even better than Yapunov stability. And then it can be even better than uh, asymptotically uh, stable. It is when you are exponentially stable. So not only are you going to converge to uh, the equilibrium, you're going to do so exponentially with, a, with an exponential minus beta t. So you're really going to go to, to that equilibrium very, very, very quickly, quite fast uh, convergence. What it means is that for, um, you know, there, there will be a neighborhood of, of, of X star so such that when you start with an initial condition um, in that neighborhood, then for all positive t, y of t minus X star, which is your equilibrium, will be bounded above by a constant alpha times basically how far away you were when you started with your initial condition. That's y naught minus x star. And then you have this exponential minus beta t that will actually make you go to zero really quickly. So uh, that is uh, exponential stability. And we saw an example uh, in the previous videos, and that was y prime of t equals minus 3 y, y of t. Basically, uh, y prime of t equals m y of t with a negative m. Well, that has an equilibrium which is zero. And this is exponentially stable because y of t is equal to y naught exponential uh, well, mt, so if m is, is negative 3, it means that it will be exponentially stable because you will have this exponential minus 3t that will actually make you go to, to 0 really quickly. All right, so what you have is obviously the exponential stability is the best you can get uh, out of the 3. Uh, and then, of course, that will imply asymptotic stability, which in turn will imply, will imply Lyapunov stability. All right. You probably remember a, a corollary we had to one of the results in the previous video, and I would like to rewrite this corollary this way using the, the vocabulary we just introduced and we just introduced now. So let's consider uh, this linear ODE that we considered in the previous section, y prime equals a y, where a is is a non-singular matrix. We're basically dealing with a uh, with a with a, an ODE which uh, which takes its values in R, in R D, D being the dimension. So obviously x star equals zero is the only equilibrium. Now, by the way, when I write x star equals zero, that's the zero of Rd, of course. It's the uh, zero vector. Now, I'm just rewriting the corollary. I'm mean, just not, not, not doing anything, but just rewriting using what we just said. And um, by I'm just going to rewrite it this way. If the spectrum of A, meaning the, the eigenvalues of A, is included in the um, left um, pla uh, half plane, uh, half complex plane, uh, which is all the real values of z negative, then zero is exponentially stable. However, if one of the eigenvalues has a real part which is positive, then zero will be unstable. Now, this uh, will actually lead to a theorem, which is the Lyapunov theorem, which assumes f to be c2. And here's what it says. It says that if x star is an equilibrium and all of the eigenvalues of the Jacobian matrix df of x star have negative real parts, then x star is exponentially stable. Okay, and if at least one of the eigenvalues is a positive real part, then x star is unstable. What it really means is, uh, well, stability will be obviously uh, driven by the eigenvalues of the Jacobian matrix, which uh, is, um, you know, 
provided, of course, we have eigenvalues which, you know, all, all of them have their real parts which are negative or positive. Now, the way we will prove this theorem is by investigating the behavior of the ODE in the neighborhood of the equilibrium. And when we're going to do this, we're going to do something called linearization. So let me actually um, explain to you what we're going to do. If you consider y prime of t equals f of y of t, which is our ODE, and you have an equilibrium x star, then you could define psi of t as y of t minus x star. And Obviously, if you are in a neighborhood of x star, you know, quite close to x star, then you expect psi of t to be close to zero. Now, what you have, obviously, is that psi prime of t is, well, y prime of t plus the derivative of the constant x star, which is zero. So, what you really have is f of y of t, right? Since uh, y is the solution to the ODE, y prime equals f of y. But if you have f of y of t, then what you have is f of x star plus psi of t. So let me write this this way. Now, if we know that f has the right regularity, we can do a Taylor expansion and say that f of x star plus psi of t is f of x star plus, well, the Jacobian matrix uh, multiplied by psi of t plus a term that will be small when psi of t is small. It will actually go uh, quadratically, quadratically uh, to zero when psi of t in norm goes to zero. Okay? And of course, if you are in dimension one, what you have is simply, well, the, 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 the Taylor expansion uh, in R, which is f of x star plus the derivative of f at x star times a number uh, psi of t. And if you are in dimension n, in dimension d, then f of x star will be a vector in Rd. A df x star is a d by d matrix, and psi of t is a vector of dimension d. Of course, when you, when you multiply them, you obtain a vector of dimension d. And as a reminder, the Jacobian matrix is the derivative of the ith uh, component of f by the jth component of, um, of x. Uh, of, I mean, in other words, the, 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 the variable uh, number j in, in the vector in the, in the, the input. So that, that is just, you know, I, mean, I know you, you know this because Jacobian matrix is, is extremely useful if you've seen it before, including when you did a, a change of variable in, in, um, in, the, in the CIP class. So, I mean, you're very familiar with it. Uh, and obviously, uh, what you are doing is computing this Jacobian matrix at the equilibrium x star, okay? Now, what we have then is that if you take into account that f of x star is equal to zero, well, that means that the, the first term of your equality over there is going to be zero, right? Uh, and the last term, the O of psi of t square, uh, will be supposedly small when, uh, when I mean, if, if y of t is close to x star, right? So, so in the neighborhood of x star, you expect that term to be small. So from a heuristical point of view, what we're saying is that what we should get as a behavior is something which is psi prime of t equals df x star times psi of t. Now, I'm not saying I can replace my equation with this new equation. I'm just saying that if, uh, if we have the right properties, then hopefully we can bound our epsilons and we can do all the things we are used to doing to somehow um, prove that we have a behavior that is similar to the behavior of that uh, particular ODE. So what I'm saying here is that if you have y prime of t equals f of y of t, and if uh, x star is in equilibrium, then under the right properties, you expect psi prime of t equals df x star psi of t to be driving the behavior of the system when you're close to x star. Now, that is called 
linearization of the ODE around X star, okay? And provided you have the right, the, the, the right regularity on F, then the behavior of the ODE around X star, again, will be close to the behavior of its linear counterpart. Now, I would like to really insist on one thing is that it is not a proof. So, I mean, you know, a, a proper proof start with the epsilon, you know, really controls everything. I'm just trying to give you an idea of why it works. Uh, the actual proof is in the references, so you should go and, and, and look it up. I'm just trying to explain to you how it works and why it works. Okay, so this is not a proof. We don't want to see this in the final uh, exam. Uh, you know, like, you know, it should be close. No, no, no. At this point, I'm just trying to explain to you how this works. The full proof is in the references. So for this reason, I won't call this a proof. I will call this a sketch of the proof. So the consequence of this is what we, we basically discussed earlier, which is that if the uh, eigenvalues of the Jacobian matrix are all with a real part which is negative, then X star will be exponentially stable. And if one or more of the eigenvalues have a real part which is positive, then it will be unstable. Okay? Now, you should notice that I've, I've assumed that the eigenvalues are either positive in terms of real part or negative in terms of real part. We, we don't have eigenvalues with the real part equal to zero. Now, if that's the case, when, what it really means is that the, 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 the Taylor expansion, uh, well, you, you kind of need to go further into Taylor expansion. It's a little bit like in dimension one, if the first derivative is equal to zero, and then what will drive the system is really the second derivative, it's not zero, or maybe a higher order derivative. So we are assuming that the eigenvalues are with positive or negative real part, uh, and this, um, the, this, uh, this situation is called an hyperbolic uh, equilibrium, otherwise it will be called degenerate.